Hello, hello, hello. It is Sunday morning. Man, what a blessing it is to see Sunday morning. And guess what? It's time to go to church. Hey, welcome to Greater Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. 930 service. We thank you for being here with us today. We appreciate your presence today. And I know if you can hear me and you can see me, God has been good to you. So thank you. We welcome our members. We welcome our visitors. We welcome our friends. And most of all, we welcome the Holy Spirit. Come on in, come on in, come on in, Holy Spirit. Go ahead, tell everybody to get up, get up, get up. It's time to go to church. Hey. And if you're celebrating a birthday, happy birthday. If you're celebrating an anniversary, happy anniversary. Hey. If you're celebrating the goodness of the Lord, somebody say hallelujah. But this is how we like to start our service. Listen, let the Jesus in me, let the Jesus in you, let the Jesus in you, let the Jesus in me. Every knee, every knee 
right here how many y'all got victory come on clap your hands and let's go right here come on come on say in the name of jesus in the name of jesus we have the victory in the name of jesus precious name of jesus satan you have to flee can stand before us when we call on that great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. If you got victory, come on. In the name of Jesus, precious name of Jesus, Satan, you have to flee. Oh. Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, tell me who can stand before us. That great name, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, 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 precious Jesus, 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 hey. Yes, I got it. Yes, I got it. Come on, put your hands together. Yes, I got it. Yes, I got it. Yes, God got it. Yes, I 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 got it.
Come on, we serve a living God, hallelujah. And he's worthy to be praised. God, we glorify you and we love you, we magnify you. Thank you for being the living God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you know it, sing along. There is a name above every name that has all power he rules and he will reign forever and ever bow and we proclaim you are the living God come on sing it y'all there is a name yeah that has all power. Yes, God. He rules and he reigns. Come on, forever. Yes, God. Come on, we bow and we proclaim that you are the living God. Come on, let's call his name. His name is Come on, Jesus. We call your name. Jesus Christ the King. Come on, he's Christ the King. His name is Jesus. 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 You are. You are the King. Come on, let's sing from the top. Come on, there is a name said. Above every name. That has all power. Come on, he rules and he will reign. Forever. We bow and we proclaim, hallelujah, that you are the living God. Come on, his name is. Come on, he's Christ the King. Jesus. You are. Come on, let's take it up. Oh. There's healing in your name. Jesus Christ the King. Come on, he's Christ the King. His name is Jesus. 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 Come on, say you are. King. 
Come on, he's the living God. You are. You are the Come on, you're the living God, Jesus. You are. You are the now come on and give him praise. Come on, give him glory. Come on. Come on, give him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right there where you are, right where you are right now. I just want you to just take a time, take this time in this moment just to lift your hands and worship our God. Hallelujah. Come on, God, you're wonderful. God, you're awesome, and we magnify you. We glorify your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Oh, the glory of your presence. We are people. We give your reverence. So rise from your rest. And be blessed by our praise as we glory in you, in your embrace. Let your presence now fill this place, all oh, the glory, yes, God, of your presence. We, your people, give your reverence, O our eyes, from your rest, and be blessed by our praise as we glory in, in your embrace. Let your praise. Now feel this place. Feel this place, God. Hallelujah. Feel this place, God, with your presence. Feel this place, God, with your power. Feel this place with your healing, God. We magnify you, Jesus, and we glorify you because you are good. Hallelujah. The scripture today comes from Psalms 91, King James Version. Uh, if you can uh, open your Bibles or your app to Psalms 91 and read with me. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, as we in right now, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh to thee. Speak life into your life. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, that habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall, he shall give his angels charge over thee, thou lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and otter, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him, I will set 
him on high because he hath known my name. Hallelujah. He shall come upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And number 16 said, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hallelujah to your word, Father. We thank you in the name of Jesus. We come humbly bowing before you the only way that we know how, Father. We rest at your feet. We plant ourselves at your feet right now, Father, asking in the name of Jesus that you will honor us with your presence right now. Honor us with the gift of holiness right now in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we need you now more than ever. We think we need you right now. We're asking you that you will forgive us for all of our sins, all that we have done, known and unknown. Heavenly Father, we're asking that you will wash us clean, that we may be pure and white. Wash us with the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father. And not only that, don't leave us empty, but replace us with your presence, Holy Father. In the name of Jesus, we're asking you that you will go with us and stand by us in every decision, every walk, whatever we do. If we walk outside our house or we stay inside our house during this pandemic, Heavenly Father, we're asking for your presence to be in the midst of us. We love you. We adore you. We magnify your holy name in the name of Jesus. We know that you will protect us from all evil, hurt, harm, and danger. You've done it in the past, and I know you'll do it right now. Heavenly Father, we depend on you for every aspect of this life that you have given us here on this earth. Heavenly Father, take it. Heavenly Father, use us as you want us to go and do and say, not only that, in our physical appearance, Heavenly Father, that it will magnify you and show you in our daily living. We bless and we ask for blessings for every church door that opens in your name, Heavenly Father. We ask the Holy Spirit to abide. Not only that, bless the leaders who are going on the search circumstances right now that you will crown their head with more wisdom and more knowledge as they direct us in a way to go including our governor and the Minnesota Department of Health all those that are in charge Heavenly Father we ask that you would give them gumption that they'll make the right decision in our on our behalf we ask all these blessings in the name of Jesus and by the gumption of the Holy Spirit amen Good morning, Greater Friendship. This is your hymn of the day. What a friend we have in Jesus. We could just do it a little differently. Is that all right? Let's play the second verse.
Good morning, Greater Friendship family and friends. Thank you for joining us today on this third Sunday in May. Can you believe that? We are blessed to have this day. Uh, we're blessed to even be here. So we take out a time right now to say, praise God, thank you for all you've done. Now today, third Sunday, is usually our health presentation Sunday. And today is No Menthol Sunday. Praise God. Greater Friendship is No Menthol Church. We are a No Menthol Church. This um, uh, T-shirt says, proud to be tobacco-free. And let me give my, my uh, testimony about that. I am thankful to God to, for being tobacco free because I smoked for some 15 years and I could not breathe so I prayed to God and it took me three years to quit but God answered my prayer in that uh, request and he gave me more he gave me the ability to breathe again so just a, a tidbit and coincide with the COVID-19 uh, epi uh, pandemic, sorry, that we are going through right now. Let me tell you something about the immune system. Uh, the immune system is the body way, the body's way to protect itself from infections uh, and diseases. It works to fight everything from the cold, uh, flu viruses, to serious conditions such as cancer and COVID-19, should I add. Now, Smoking harms the immune system and can make the body less successful in fighting diseases. Smoking just doesn't cause cancer. It also weakens your immune system, making you more prone to infection, more prone to the COVID, for example, COVID-19 infection because the tar and other toxins that's in the smoke destroys antibodies and you have less ability to fight off infections and remain sicker longer. So if you are continually to smoke, please, please, uh, there is help out there. It's, it's, personally, it is not easy, but there is help out there who have special programs for smoking cessation or, or quit smoking. So we ask you to please get help. Uh, mine was through prayer and fasting. So it's whatever you are, are able to do as far as uh, quitting smoking. But we do encourage it because it does weaken your immune system. Now speaking of COVID-19 uh, and this pandemic that we're going through, now the uh, the state uh, is opening up per the governor's uh, instructions, but I would like to say it does not mean that you stop uh, social distancing, wearing your mask when you go out. I encourage you to even wear gloves if possible, or for sure, wash your hands. Wash your hands and at least for 20 seconds, wash your hands. When you got a cough, cough into your sleeve. Uh, don't cough out because germs travel so far and we do not want to have other people, diseases, please wear your mask, uh, wear your gloves, keep six, at least six feet apart or more. Studies show uh, the coughing, it depends on how how strong it is, can travel at least nine feet. But the recommendation is keep at least six feet apart uh, and take other precautions as needed. Uh, if you don't have to go out just because it's open, don't go out. And then if you have to go out, be very careful and take those uh, recommendations. Thank you very much, and uh, you will be getting more information as far as uh, when the church will open and the precautions that we will take. Uh, we're going to require masks, and we're going to ask very highly that everyone wear a mask uh, during this pandemic, which is ongoing. 
and we want to be a germ-free church. That's what our goal is. And to be a germ-free church, that means education, education, education. We want to be in front of you. We're letting you know what's going on uh, and where we're going from here. And the community needs to know where we are and where we're going and steps we're taking to uh, prevent uh, uh, the, the spread of this awful virus. And the social aspect I'd like to include in there very quickly. Um, if you are lonely, call somebody. If you're sick, go to the doctor. There are places now, even in North Minneapolis, who are taking drive-up cases for COVID-19. We ask you to call your, but you have to call your primary care provider in order to get tested. Call your doctor and ask if you could get tested and where you would like to go to get tested. If you have any symptoms, please call your doctor. Thank you very much. Have such a lovely day. Enjoy the day that the Lord has made. Be happy. Be glad in it. And of course, I say, the power is in the tongue. Speak life. Speak life to yourself. God bless you and forever keep you. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. I pray that you've been enjoying our service up until this point and that you are in touch with the Holy Spirit because it is through the Holy Spirit that we make it through this challenging time that we're in. It's Health Sunday, y'all. Make sure you're washing them hands. Don't touch your face. Put that mask on. We got to keep each other safe. If you want to know what's going on around Greater Friendship, I encourage you to visit our website, www.greatfriend.org. We got Bible classes. We got prayer calls. We got ministry meetings. We got a way that you can get in touch with the family of Greater Friendship. If you want to stay in touch, if you want to get on our email and our text list, visit our website in the upper right-hand corner. You will see how you can sign up. So we encourage you to stay connected to God and let's stay connected to one another. It's offering time. The work of the church must continue. So right now, we're asking that you give as God has given unto you. And watch him work. Watch him work. Watch him take care of you and carry you every step of the way. On the screen, you'll see there's four ways to give. So that we pray. So we pray that God moves on your heart to support the ministry so that the work of God can continue to spread. We can continue to expand the kingdom and do his will. Amen. I'm going to let our van take it from him. While you're looking at different options to give, God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the service. Amen. Good morning. My prayer is that this message find you doing well today. Hope you are really giving God praise for what he's done and allowing us to see another Sunday morning. And I still say through it all, God is good. He's good all the time and he's good right now. God bless you. I want to um, start by saying that I got this shirt in my hand. My wife just had it. 
And she was talking about how she quit smoking on this out of no menthol Sunday. Now, this church says proud to be tobacco free. I hadn't always been tobacco free. I smoked too. Up until back in 1992, I smoked. Now, can you imagine that I'm smoking, my wife's smoking, and then we try to get a kiss and we both smell like an ashtray? Oh, you know, that, that was the whole thing of it. It was just like tasting an ashtray. I, I know the taste that was in my mouth, the taste that was in her mouth, I know it was like an ashtray. Because when she quit and I kept going, then I know that's what I tasted like. And her kiss got sweeter when she quit. Thank God for that. Praise God. She quit. And then um, I had to quit. I could not go along any further. When my daughter was born, I had to quit because it affected her so much. So the bottom line is when I quit. Yeah, what I did. I'm gonna give you a plan here. I just said I bought a pack of cigarettes. I put them on the dashboard of my car. And I rode around with them and I talked to them daily. And I said to them every day, you are not killing me. I said to them every day, you are not killing me. You're affecting the way I breathe. You're affecting my kiss. You are not going to mess me up. I talked to them every day in the car. And on that first day, I said, if I can go three days, on the third day morning, Jesus got up. I said, if I can just make it three days, I believe I'll, I'll be all right. So what happened then on that third day, I went for three days. And, and claim the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I said, I'm all right now. But then I said, now I got to go seven days because seven is complete. So when I went the seven days, I knew it was all over and I was done and had even wanted one anymore. After seven days working on this fact, you are not killing me. So I said, anybody out there today who's listening, then maybe you can use that plan and stop smoking. Let me give this shirt over here to you, babe. And yeah, all right. In today's message, First Peter chapter one, verses three to nine will be the center of the message. But I want to uh, go back to verse one and kind of show who this particular message is written to, who it was written to then. To God's elect, and this is from the NIV, to God's elect, Exiles scattered throughout the providence of Pontus and Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia and Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkle with his blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Praise be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. The inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power unto the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all of this, you greatly be jealous. Though now, for a little while, you may have, may have to have suffered griefs of all kinds of trials. These have come, these have come so that the, the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even through refined by, even though refined by fire, may result in praise, in glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with inexpressible and glorious joy. If you are receiving the end result of your faith, the self, for you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. I want to Speak today and tell you to hold on, hold it on through tough times. Talk about it, hold it on through tough times. Um, I was thinking this week, I used to play softball. I, was, I used to love softball, and I could do pretty good at softball. I hit a few home runs in my life. But I remember this big game that everybody wanted to see. 
the big game, the game of the century, Blue Spring and Rose Hill. Blue Spring, Mississippi, Rose Hill, Mississippi, a major game back then. We had been waiting and waiting for that big Saturday to come so that Blue Spring and Rose Hill could get together and play softball. When that Saturday finally came that we were to play, it was cloudy and looking like rain. Cloudy, looking like rain. Sure enough, in about the third inning, the sky turned dark and it began to sprinkle. By this time, it was a very intense game. Emotion was running high. And as it continued to rain, we couldn't just call off the game. But we decided to go into a rain delay, a rain delay. And I remember doing the rain delay. I remember finding a shelter and sheltering in place for almost an hour. I sheltered in place for almost an hour. Lots of people sheltered on the trees and cars, just wherever they could get out of the rain, they sheltered in place. We were held in limbo while we were waiting to see how long and how hard it was going to rain. It was very interesting, as I recall, watching how different people reacted to this shelter in place. Some left as soon as the first drop fell from the sky. They just left. Others sat through the rain for a while, but eventually got tired of waiting and just left, went home. And this, this was crazy, but some just stood in the rain, just stood in the rain, just stood in the rain. It's raining, they just stand in the rain, and finally they decided if they got wet enough, they decided to go ahead and leave. But many of us weren't willing to give up that easy. We had been waiting and waiting for this game, and we were determined to wait out the storm. Sheltered in place, sheltered in place while waiting out the storm. And as we sheltered in place, found that the clouds rolled by. And after a little work, a little raking, a little wiping, we were able to take the field. And even though the game was far from over, I felt like we had already won because we had outlasted the storm. I felt like we had already won because we had outlasted the storm. Now, at different times in your life, you will find yourself in this kind of situation like we're in right now. Sometimes we find ourselves in the midst of a storm that we didn't cause. You didn't cause it, and you didn't cause it, so therefore you can't control it. And you have no choice but to wait. These kinds of problems are often the most difficult to face because as we wait, they make us feel helpless. We feel helpless. But in our text, 1 Peter was written for people in this kind of predicament. In the very first chapter, he says, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. King James Version. Manifold means various. It means many colors. In the NIV, it's translated as you are in all kinds of trials. The word that translated trials literally means adversity or problem. What Peter is saying in effect here, he's really saying, I realize that you are going through all kinds of problems. Not just talking about persecution and the threat of death, but I know you're having all kind of problems. He means that you, you, you're having health problems and money problems and family problems and work problems and COVID-19 problems and any other kind of difficult you may, difficulty you may face. The scripture is clear that we will face problems. Scripture is clear we will face problems. When Jesus told the story of the wise man and the foolish man who built their houses, guess what? They had one common experience. You remember what that common experience they both, that both men shared? They both experienced a storm that was challenging the very foundation of their lives. Both experienced a storm that was challenging the very foundation of their lives. Today, as we look at 1 Peter and 
we examine these verses, Peter reminds us of some principles that will help us endure problems. When we got problems that we feel like we can't solve, he's going to help us here today. First of all, we got to realize that this problem is only temporary. What we're going through now, it's only, it's only, it's only temporary. Notice that when Peter makes reference to going through all kinds of trials, he includes this qualifying phrase. In verse 6, he said, for a little while, you're going through all these trials, you're going through all this stuff. But listen, he hadn't put in there for a little while. Our problem won't last forever. And we need to remember that they are, by their very nature, only temporary. Actually, this should be our attitude to all of life. We shouldn't become too attached to this world's pleasures or its problems. And that's why so many people today are doing so many crazy things. I know you've seen it on TV and around the country. People are doing some crazy things because they have gotten attached to the pleasures of this world. But I want you to know today we shouldn't become too attached to the world's pleasures or the world's problems. We need to keep in mind that we are, as Peter mentions in verse 1, only strangers here. We're only strangers here. There's an old hymn we used to sing back at Morning Star Choir that says, this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My home is far away somewhere beyond the blue the angels beckon me from heaven's distant shore and I can't feel at home. I can't feel at home. I can't feel at home in this world anymore. These words reflect the attitude that we need to have in life, especially to our problems. They are only temporary. They are only temporary. You may have, have heard this formula before, and so I, I can say it again, this formula for dealing with, with problems. Here's the formula. Don't sweat the small stuff. Remember, it's all small stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. Remember, it's all small stuff. Unfortunately, when we look at our problem, they don't seem small. They seem huge with a capital H. When we look at our problem, they don't seem temporary. They seem permanent. I know what we're going through now seem like it's permanent, like we've been here forever. But the truth is, it's only a matter of perspective. It's only a matter of perspective. See, when we look too closely at our problems, we lose perspective and they begin to seem larger than what they really are. Our problems, what we're going through is temporary. When we forget that, we lose perspective and do something foolish or do something desperate or even do, something, do both something foolish and desperate. Let me give you an example. Man, Caught a cold, so he went to see the doctor and asked for a cure. The doctor said, we can't cure a cold. All I recommend is for you to take some aspirin, drink plenty of fluid, get some rest, and wait it out. You'll feel better in a few days. Wait it out. You'll feel better in a few days. The man didn't like what he heard. He wanted to be cured immediately. But he had no choice, so he went home. When he woke up the next day, he didn't feel any better. Notice I said the next day, he didn't feel any better. Things hadn't gotten any better. In fact, he, said he felt worse. Still barefooted in his pajamas, he told his wife, I can't stand this any longer. I'm going outside, and I'm going to take a long walk. His wife said, are you crazy? Are you crazy? You really going to do this? It's, it's freezing out there. It's raining, it's sleeting. You catch the pneumonia. The man said, exactly, that's what I want. And then I'll get well in no time because I know the doctor can cure pneumonia. Hmm. Let's not do anything foolish and crazy. I said crazy. We need to remember that our problems are only temporary. This applies especially when, even when we're temptation, when we attempted to do something crazy. Notice, temptations cannot last forever. They do not last forever. 
Temptation is not that strong. It's not that strong. Talk about lasting forever. Listen, if we wait, if we just wait, pray, wait, pray and wait, it will go away. James chapter 4 verse 7 said, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. As you seek God, fall upon your face, just resist the devil and he will flee from you. I want you right now to think of the biggest problem you're facing. The biggest problem we're facing right now, COVID-19. COVID Remind yourself that this problem will not last forever. This problem will not last forever. You can do, endure anything if you know that it will not last forever. We're going we're gonna to be all right. We're going to make it. Peter reminds us that when you are going through problems that seem like they can't be solved, hold on. Hold on and remember, it's only temporary. But then the next thing I want, I, that jumps out of us in, in this particular text is that this problem doesn't have to make me miserable. Think about it. It's temporary. Temporary, what we're going through, temporary. And it does not have to make me miserable. Verse 6, in this you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while, while, a little while, you may have to have, have had to suffer. You may have had to suffer grief. Peter's making a reference here to all the good things that God has already given us. And that's what we need to think about. So we won't be miserable. Think about what God has already given us. In verses three through five, Peter lists these things that God has already given us. He said, listen, we have received God's mercy. We have been given New birth and a new life. We can live this life with a sense of hope and optimism because of what we've been given. We need not to be afraid of death because Jesus conquered death. We have an eternal inheritance that can never be destroyed. This is what he tells us. We have an eternal inheritance that, that can never be destroyed. And then he says we are protected by God's power. We are protected by God's power until the end of time. Now, if all this stuff is true, if all these things are true, then we don't need to allow a few temporary problems to rob us of our joy, to rob us of our happiness. Don't let it do this. The things that are most important can never be taken away. God got us. They can never be taken away from us. Most important thing like God's mercy and God's Power and eternal life, it cannot be taken away from us. As we face this pandemic and the problems that come with it, we may not be able to do anything about the problem. Oh, we can pray about it. But we can, we're not going to be able to just get up and, and just wish it away. Just one morning we're going to wake up and it's just gone. No. But we don't have to let it make us miserable. Abraham Lincoln said it like this. He said, a person is as happy as he makes up his mind to be. A person is as happy as he makes up his mind to be. It's our choice how we react to trials and tribulations. It's our choice. Peter said even though we suffer grief, we have every reason to rejoice because God of his goodness, he's still good, his goodness toward us right now, he's still Good. So we have every reason to rejoice. We know God is good. The enemy may cause us to lose some things, <laughs> but he cannot take away, from my, my, take, take away my freedom to choose how I will, I will react to what happens to me. He may take some things, but he can't take my freedom of choosing how I will react no matter what happens to me. Job said it like this. He said in, in Job 13 and 15, he said, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I still believe, Job. I'm like, I'm like Job. I still believe. Though we are going through, I still trust him. If we remember this, then no problem that we face has the power to take away our joy. I refuse. And I serve notice 
on the enemy right now. Anybody else out there who think you can make me miserable? I refuse. I won't let nobody steal my joy. I will not be miserable. And I want you to speak that in your spirit right now. I refuse. I won't let nobody steal my joy. I will not be miserable. I'm going to hold my head up, put my hand together, give God some praise right now. Peter also encouraged us to remember. We don't have to be miserable, but he encourages us to remember this too. This problem will help us to grow. What we're going through now, it's going to help us to grow. And I see growth taking place everywhere. Trust me. I see growth in my, even myself. And I see it in our churches. I see growth taking place because of what we're going through. Things that we never knew about, never thought about, is happening right now. Now, the principle in Scripture that may, uh, many of us have tried to resist all of our lives, but it cannot be sidestepped, it cannot be avoided. The principle is pain precedes growth. I sometimes wish that's, that this wasn't true because I want to grow without pain. I, I, I wish that, 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 that pleasure would cause growth, but it certainly does. Weightlifters have a slogan, no pain, no gain. I'm, out of, I'm a really witness to that. No pain, no gain. And that slogan is not just a catchy phrase, a catchy slogan. It's scriptural. There is no gain without the pain of discipline. There's no gain without the pain of perseverance. There's no gain without the pain of self-denial. No pain, no gain. Just like every workout makes an athlete a little bit stronger every time, so every problem or every temptation we endure makes us a little bit stronger every time. Thank God for the strength he's given me. Peter said, in verse 7, he said, These have come, these problems have come, so that your faith may be proved genuine. Your faith will be proved genuine and may result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. That's what it's all about. As we face various trials, we need to remember we have the power to overcome any test or any temptation because God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. First Corinthians 10 and 13. God is faithful. And you know what? It's not that God gives us problems to match our strength. He gives us strength to match our problem. Keep that in mind. God gives us strength to match our problems. And he promises that his strength is available whenever we need it. Call him whenever you need it. His strength is available for you right now who are going through it and you feel like you're on the, on the, on the edge of, of giving up. Call out to God for his strength. And it's available right now. And you know what? Every problem can work out for our best. Now, there are more examples of this in Scripture than we have time to mention. I've preached on a few of them, but I want to consider just two of them, just, just some examples. Think of Joseph, sold by his brothers as a slave, being unjustly accused of misconduct in Potiphar's house. He ended up alone and in prison in a foreign land. But it was these very events that led to his eventually becoming a ruler in Egypt. His life at one point seemed to be a tragedy, tragedy in the making. Yet it turned out to be one of the most inspiring stories in all of Scripture. And then about 2,000 years later, the Apostle Paul also unjustly imprisoned. His only crime was, his only crime was preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. His enemies tried to silence him, but Paul's imprisonment became an opportunity to write letters to the churches he couldn't visit. And of course, those letters became scripture. God is going to use somebody right now. As you go through what you're going through, God is going to use you to do some writing and do some praying and, and no telling what you're going to come out and what, how it's going to benefit the world when God get through with you. Go ahead and do what God is calling you to do right now. No matter how bad things look, remember that God takes great pleasure in turning the tide in the course of our lives. 
Listen to what he promises in Scripture. Nehemiah 13 and 2, he says, Our God turned the curse into a blessing. Deuteronomy 23 and 5 says, The Lord your God turned the curse into a blessing for you because the Lord your God loves you. And we know what Romans 8 and 28 says. So we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love him. God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God. All of us today, we are facing storms in our lives. And they are just too strong for us to weather on our own. We cannot do this on our own. We are better together. I mean it from my heart. We are better together. We must be together. We must stand together. We must pray together. That's why I love those uh, early prayer calls during the week. People are banding together, praying together, and becoming stronger and stronger together. So, in closing, I want to say that whether or not you've called the storm or not, it's irrelevant. That's what we, we had going on this week. We have going on right now almost coming to on the verge of war because everybody pointed the finger about where it came from. Uh, you know, you hear, it came from China. New York said it came from Europe. Well, that's really whether or not you call the storm or not, it's irrelevant. What is relevant, though, is how you react to the storm. How you react to it. Remember that because you are a child of God, the storm is really nothing more than a rain delay. Remember, remember the softball game? It's a rain delay. And God promised that eventually it's going to stop raining. And we're going to win the game. And we're going to feel like winners just because we come out. Isaiah 26 and 20 says, go, my people. Enter your rooms and shut the doors behind you. Hide yourself for a little while until his wrath has passed. Oh, Lord. Go, my people. Go, my people. Enter your rooms and shut the doors behind you. Hide yourself for a little while until his wrath has passed. We're in a rain delay. We have problems that we can't solve. We all do. But these problems are temporary. But most of all, remember, these problems we face are not meant to take the strength out of you, but to put strength into you. Let us use these tough times as an opportunity to grow closer to Jesus. Oh, you have some time on your hands. Time at home, time with your Bible, time with your wife, time with your husband, time with your children. Use these tough time as an opportunity to grow closer to each other and to grow closer to God. That's what we call friendship strong. Listen, if you're out there today and you heard this message and you want to be saved, you want a relationship with Jesus Christ, we encourage you right now to give your life to Jesus. Come as you are. Give your life to Jesus. And I promise you, he will save you. He will save you. Let him do it. When you're saved, you know, you want to be a part of a family, a part of a church. And I encourage you to find you a church home, a Bible preaching, Bible teaching church home. Somebody who loves you, who cares for you, who will put their arms around you and who will walk with you and help you to grow in his word. Find that kind of place, wherever you are listening from today. But I also can say to you, if you're in the area and you want to be a part of greater friendship, call us. Call us, tweet us, email us, and we will receive you into our family. God bless you. We love you. Lord, we, how we love you today. How we thank you for who you are, for what you've done, what we know you're going to do. We pray that this message 
would go into the hearts of your people. And it would encourage us to hold on during these tough times. Yes, Lord, we know it's tough. We know it's hard. We're going through a lot. But today you reminded us that it's only for a little while. And God, we're determined to hold on, to hold out. Because we say like Job, I still believe, I still believe in the power of God. God, we love you now. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Look forward to seeing you soon.